Hi everyone, uh, this is footage from a recent trip I did to Burton Springs um, in a village called Burton just outside of Bridgewater. We're on Alderpool today which is a half an acre lake, uh, 13 swims on there, they only allow 10 at a time on to give people a bit of space. It's about 7 foot average I'd say in the middle and then obviously the margin shallow up to you know under sort of half a foot deep um, today I'm going to be doing a few different tactics to show you um, it's based on a beautiful campsite uh, they've got bell tents like this and log cabins then obviously your camper and caravan pitches and stuff uh, if you check out their website it will say all about the fishing um, show the lakes there there's three lakes well, uh, Kingfisher's Catfish Lake and then you've got Specimen Lake and then uh, obviously the outer pool that we're on today I'm going to be fishing Peg 6 uh, you can also see about the holidays they do which shows your tent pitches and your bell tents glamping pods etc and that and it's also got the best toilets I've seen at a fishery before being that it's a campsite so let's get some fishing done so the goal today is obviously there's a lot of carp in here so we're going to catch some carp but I also want to try and get amongst the bigger bream and there's some good tension here. The uh, bream go up to £9, the tench go up to £8, there's carp up to £18 but the average sort of size carp is 2 to £5 I'd say. Um, I'm going to start on the rod today because I know a lot of people that fish a lake fish with a rod so I'm just going to show you know a few tactics of um, how to catch on the on the feeder rod so I'm using a little Preston ICS method feeder um, with micros and then just a little yellow wafter um, I'm, as I'm casting in I'm timing how long it's been out at first before I build up build up the swim I'd be sort of leaving it out for 10 minutes but um, as you can see as the, as the bait starts going in you know sort of if I don't get a bite within five minutes I'll be redoing it and as you can see on that that was just under three minutes so if I'm not getting a bite within five minutes I'll be redoing it and changing the hook bait and that uh, while I was on the rod for, I'd say I spent the first sort of hour, hour and a half on the feeder rod, I was um, constantly having to change hook baits and I was going between micros and ground bait on the method feeder and then after a while, t because I was getting a bit of bait into the swim and there was quite a few fish, you know, it was getting quite solid, there was a lot of bubbles coming up, I went to a hybrid feeder where I could really squeeze the bait in so I wasn't dropping too much excess into the lake. So, um, yeah, bites are coming in good. I've only uh, put a few clips of the feeder rod just to show you. So, this was my first fish of the day. Like I said, there's, you know, there's a lot around the two pound four pound and you will get the odd one about a pound but there's some nice looking fish in here you know it's just about keeping it going uh, you know the more you catch the more chance you've got of getting the bigger ones but they're all nice weight builders and it's nice to get bending the rod um so what i'm doing is i'm redoing the bait onto the feeder so i've got a Preston method mold and just putting my hook bait in first putting micros in pushing it in squeeze it on and then What I'm doing I'm clipped up to about nine meters and as you see I'll cast and bring the rod right back over my head and that's so then when the by the time the Feeder swings back I'm about my eight meter line which I plan to fish on the pole later but also if you notice I'm reeling quite a bit of line even though I'm clipped up I'm not tight to the spot so I'm reeling quite a lot of line back onto the rod and that's in case I do get a bigger fish and it does want to pull a bit of line 
I've got a bit of slack there so it can pull a bit so that's the idea of that um, we're just waiting for another bite now so it's, like I said the uh, bites weren't taking that long so we'll just watch this for a minute There we go, nice savage take there. Um, you get lots of little twitches on the end of the rod. There's quite a few little skimmers pushing the feeder about. And obviously because there's quite a few fish in the peg, you're gonna get a lot of liners and stuff, but you'll soon know when, when a fish is on, the rod will wrap round. That's what you're waiting for. So, you know, don't be striking it just at any little, little touch you know wait for it they, they know you know when they're on so obviously that one again took about four minutes so like I said after about five or six minutes if I haven't had a bite I'll redo it and I'll maybe change the hook bait I was finding I was getting sort of two to four fish and then it was going a bit taking a bit longer so I was changing my hook baits constantly I was going from red to yellow to just a normal six mil pellet um trying all different things um double corn can work well here um especially if you're after the bream uh that that was my goal to try and get some of the bigger bream and sometimes they ca can come out on the feeder um but this time i didn't catch any on the feeder but i did i was catching carp steadily in the morning So now we're going to have a look down the margin. I know it's a bit early for the margin, not like in a match situation or something. People tend to fish margin for the last couple of hours and stuff. But as we were catching sort of smaller ones out long, I thought I'd just have a look to see if anything bigger was about and see where them bigger tench were sitting about to. They're in here somewhere. It's just trying to find them. So... What I'm doing is I'm fishing pace down the margin, fishing it a little bit harder. I normally fish it a little bit sloppier out in the open, but a little bit harder because you know this it's quite shallow here. We're looking about a foot and a half of depth, and uh, I'm getting a lot of liners where fish are coming in and stuff. So I think if I fished it a bit softer, they'd be knocking it off a bit more. Uh, one thing you notice is I'm fishing quite a big lash between the the end of the float and the start of the pole and that's because obviously because it's so shallow i want that pole up out the way i don't need to be you know i'm waiting for a good fish to come along so i'm not striking at the tiny little bites with with a pace bite it's you know a definite pull so you know you've got that time to pull the pull the slack up of the line but it just keeps it out the way you know it doesn't spook them out swim um, and then if you notice what I'm doing as I hook one I'm just making a little ball of ground bait and just throwing it in I've, that sort of little plop of bait going in the sound they definitely come into that and obviously it's adding a fresh lot of scent into the water and a bit of a cloud without overfeeding it you know I only when I started, I only 
done about two or three little balls of ground bait to start with and then went straight in with the pot with a paste and then like i said i'm just doing a ball of ground bait every so often i don't want their loads of bait down there because there's quite a few fish coming in and they just blow it everywhere and before you know it you're fishing over too big area i want them to come in look for that little ball of ground bait find my paste and nail it and that's how i'm getting quick bites down there so let's try and net this one in a minute they are taking a little while to come in from the margin so we'll just watch this a minute As you can see there's some lovely dark fish near this a beautiful mirror of about sort of three to maybe four pounds but like I said you know I want to try and get some of the bream bigger bream or and maybe even some of these tench um, when Jen came around to collect the money earlier she said that there's not been many tench really showing up recently so it'd be nice if we can get a few of them uh, so what we're going to do is, I've got a feeling that the bream will be in the deeper water out further, the darker deeper water. They seem to like it out out in the middle here for some reason. Um, so that's why I decided to go out. Now it looks like I'm fishing really far out, but I'm actually at just at 8 metres, which is only about sort of quarter of the way across the lake, maybe not even that. Um, the reason why I'm doing that is one obviously paste it's it's a very involved way of fishing you always in and out so you don't want to be having to ship the pole out miles and back and as well I'm trying to keep the area in front of me free so then the fish can move freely up and down the lake I find I, you know other times I've been down there I've seen people with the rods casting three quarters of well across so they've got line running through that centre bit and it definitely stops a fish passing through freely and I find that the fish can move move away from the from your swim. So I like to you know keep that that free area in front of me and let the fish come back into me into the baited area. And then obviously when you get a fish, if they do spook, they move back into that middle column and then when the fresh bait goes out they come back into it i mean you know while i've been there as the day gone on i've built up the swim it's about keeping the bait going in exactly the same spot and there's been more and more fish feeding you can see the bubbles is quite silty here i mean as i'm playing that fish now you can see the silt coming off the bottom but i'd say every sort of three or four third or fourth fish i'm having to add about half an inch to my depth because they're just ripping the bottom up trying to get that paste um, every so often I'm feeding four mil pellets in with the in with a pot um, but not that often most of the time it's just a paste that you know there's bits breaking off all the time and that's enough to keep them fish in there and draw them back in once they spook out if I do get a fish it goes outwards a little bit um, so it's just about keeping it going it's working so don't change it uh, we're still on carp now but in a bit the bream and tench do show up 
So we'll watch this for a bit. Well, no one likes when that happens, but unfortunately that's how it goes sometimes with pace fishing. It, the hook holds can be a little bit iffy at points. It depends how a fish takes it and you will get, uh, you know, some fish come off. You get a lot of missed bites. It's just the nature of the beast with pace fishing. It's um, one of my favorite ways of fishing, but it's also the most stressful it's definitely hard work but it can be very rewarding um you know it's working well very well today i'm not going to change from this there's no need um but yeah you will get spells where you just lose fish after fish i was quite lucky this day and i actually only had two hook pulls i didn't lose any rigs or any um hook lengths it was just straight hook pulls, so i could go straight back out and again, the hook pulls are soon forgotten about because bites were coming in that quick. So um, I'm actually using a Preston Pace One float, uh, O17 main line Preston Aqua Power, and O for 15 hook length to a size 12 hook. Uh, pace wise, I'm using Sonny Bates uh, Robin Red Margin ground bait and mix with some Thatcher's, Thatcher's ground bait. They're both sort of like a crushed pellet type mix, so they're good for making paste with. Uh, I actually ended up running out of, I made up the paste the night before, but I ended up running out of that because I was getting more bites than I planned for. So in the end, I just, you, I've got sort of two pints of of the margin mix made up of the ground bait as a ground bait and all I'm doing is adding it to a separate pot and then just mixing in a bit of water and making it into a paste as I go it's easy to do it's a very binding ground bait so it's easy to make a paste out of um, I mix it quite harder than sort of just splashing water over it in the middle of the pot to sort of change consistency to how I want it. Um, there's a lot of little skimmers down there. I did foul hook a couple and stuff. So I found with it too sloppy, the little skimmers were just knocking the hook out straight away. So it's about constantly adjusting it and getting that balance. Obviously the, the wetter the mix was, the quicker I was getting the bites if it wasn't getting knocked off. But, you know, so it's just about adjusting constantly and seeing what's what's going on at the time. So here we're going out again. What I'm doing, obviously, I've got the a Preston paste pot and I'm just reaching out as far past my spot. So then my actual pot's over my spot, putting it in the water. To sort of you almost wash the paste out into water then I drag the float back over and let it all settle it takes a little while to go down and on um, some of the times the fish will 
sort of knock it off on the way down so you you float were never actually set i had that a few times today um it's, again with pace fishing it's just how it goes it's not something that can be helped you know it's quite uh, it's quite hard to to control sometimes you know you can't sort of feather it down through the water to see what's going on you just got to drop it and wait for that float to set um, I'm not putting any shot down the line some people do some people don't um, and I've got the float set so then when the bait's on the bottom it's only showing half the bristle then that means that it, if the pace does get knocked off the float will pop up to the body of the float so I know it's you know it's time to redo it so that's um, another little good tip uh, here we go, another fish. Not sure what this one is yet. Oh, here we go, our first tent of the day. That's what we're hoping for. That's one off our list that we're looking for. Swing round for a better look at it. Not the biggest in here, like I said, they go up to eight pound, but just to get one, it's good. And I actually go on to have five in total so, which I was really happy about because like I said Jen said that there's not they haven't really been showing up recently so it's a good result so different angle here now again just showing how I'm going out and how I how I lay the rig in there's a uh, you know there's a few people turned up now it's sort of it's getting late morning now coming up towards lunchtime there's a few people around the lake now no one directly in front of me but down the each side um, everyone else is fishing rods um, presuming they're on method feeders again so and obviously, like I said, it's about keeping that bait going in that exact same spot because I noticed a few people are sort of casting it to one place, trying there for sort of 10 minutes, not having a bite, redoing it, casting it to another place. And I'm just watching all these just patches of bubbles coming up on the bait that they've just put on previous. And they're just filling their peg with all these different patches of bubbles, you know, um, with bait and fish are just fizzing up all over the place. You just want a little lake like this, you just want to keep, you know, there's, like I said, there's always fish swimming up and down that mid central channel. Just fish back from that and just keep that bait going in in that exact same spot and building that peg. Obviously, you know, if you get, if it gets a bit too crazy, there's too many bubbles, too many fish, you're getting too many liners more than than uh, fish and you want to hold off on the freebies like I by this point I haven't fed any pellets for a while the just the paste hook bait is enough to keep the fish coming in the, So the time's just coming up to one o'clock um, and there's a rule here that no cot, no fish can be left in a keep net for longer than six hours. So had a bit of a break and I'm going to do a weigh-in. I started fishing at 8.30 this morning so it's um, been a good morning definitely. Um, it's the first lot of fish. one of the um, carp nets as you've seen before I um, wetted the the sling I'm using the Marcella Safeway sling and Reuben heat and scales um, I wetted it first and then zeroed it uh, this first bag 
went uh, 25 pounds 8 ounces for the first lot so this was my sort of overflow net I filled up the first one and then I was working on my second carp net uh, some nice fish in there you know like I said they're not I've not had anything massive but there's some nice little ones that's probably the biggest one in there very lively because they've been sat in the keep net yeah you know, there's a lot like I said a lot around the two four pound mark but very nice fish all in brilliant condition so this is the silvers bag had one okay skimmer in here and we had three tench one was quite small but it's a tench nevertheless always a pleasure to catch so have a look at this one Okay. This is Jen, the o owner, coming in yeah. to have a look. So obviously she said about the yeah. tent champ being showing up much, so she wanted to have a look. Yeah. Cool. Uh, as well. There you go. Nice fish in there. Okay. Then obviously when you hold it up, just let some of the water drain out. Just sort of dripping about the same amount as when you zero the scales with just a sling to get a more accurate reading let the fish settle um, that bag went nine pound and six ounces so not bags you know there's some nice fish in there not loads but some good ones in there Probably the biggest tench, there's a couple that size. One, like I said, one a lot smaller, and then that was the biggest skimmer from that bag. But we do catch some bigger ones in a bit. So then here's the other carp net that I'm struggling with. So obviously, it's quite hard to hold the net up to tip it out and hold the way sling so especially if you don't lift the sling up you're just pretty much pouring them on the floor and they go everywhere so you, it can be a bit of a mission on your own but you just want to make sure that them fish don't go too far obviously you get you know when you drop the sling down you get the odd one jump out as you see I have a few do that but if you just have it flat on the ground ground you lose half of the fish in there so here we go a bit heavier this one now weight limits here are 50 pound for carp and 50 pound for silvers um i clicked 47 on my counter but this one actually went 52 so um sorry jen and gareth i went two pound over but obviously lucky enough that fish was just before i'd done the weigh so it went over for very long so I'm not the best at guessing weight, so just keep an eye on your weights. So, right, we're back in now. I've had another little break just after that weigh-in. We're back on, again, a different angle to show you. Um, by now, we're getting probably about quarter to two. Um, in a match situation, like the, the carp are definitely moving up in the water. Um, like I said, in a match situation, I'd be looking by now to be feeding, you know, catapulting pellets out and getting them shallow. It's going to be the quickest and most productive way of getting a, getting your weights up, you know, target the carp. Um, but I still, you know, I've had quite a few carp now. So I'm trying to, hopefully with the carp moving up in the water, I'm trying to, look still look for these tench and these bigger bream so obviously the the carp bites have slowed down a bit this afternoon which means that there is a bit more chance of the bream coming in getting a look in so you know it's not if i want on a pleasure day 
I'd be doing things slightly different, but you know, the good thing about Pleasure Day, you can try a few different things um, and try and target what you want to target. Go for lots of different things. There you go. I think this is a better skimmer or bream. It's one of the smaller ones. Do go on to have some bigger ones than that, but again, it's nice to catch them because before this morning it was mainly just carp after carp. So the days passed now. We're at 6 p.m. So I've been fishing for nine and a half hours, give or take half an hour of stop and break, which is a long time for some people, but I only fish one day a week. So um, while I've got the gear out and I'm there, I might as well make the most of it. Um, so yeah, this is the second way in now. Then yeah, I go on to have three nets out. So this is the first of three. And this is a silver's bag. You can see a nice bream there just hopped out. And we've got a couple more tench in this one. One thing's a bit bigger. So good bag. I'd be happy catching just that bag um, on its own for a day session if I was targeting servers. There's not mass amounts of fish in there, but they're all, you know, good sizes. I didn't have any of the monster bream. I think the biggest is probably four, maybe four and a half, maybe. Um, biggest tench, again, was around four, maybe a little bit over. So none of the big lumps they're doing here, but some nice fish all the same. So, and just there's obviously been a, a campsite. There's odd people walking around. They're always interested to have a chat, see how we're getting on. So they just stood behind the camera and they're interested to see what I was catching. So yeah, some nice fish there. <laughs> yeah. Breen definitely wants to get back in the water, so we'll put them straight back in. Right, showing you my behind. Apologise for that. Not sure what I'm thinking about there. Come on in. We're all waiting. So this is one of two cart nets. the pole I've been using today is the uh, Preston Pro Prototype Carp um, brilliant pole obviously can handle fish a lot bigger than we've been catching today but um, mm -hmm. yeah it's just a good all, all round pole I've, I've set up a lot more gear than I've needed today but that's just what you know that's just from obviously I'm used to that from matches I have everything set up ready to go but I normally end up only using a f half of it, um, so we only used um, margin rig and the pace rig, and then I used my my method feeder. Like I said, if you're on something that works, then just stick with it, you know. And if it doesn't, try a bit of everything. Is the way that I normally do it. I normally take lots of different baits with me, see what works on a day. 
So that bag went £44. That one. I forgot to say the Silvers bag went 27.5, so not too bad for the Silvers. Here we go, here's the final net. While I'm doing this, um, just saying, uh, yeah, Burton Springs is run by uh, Jen, Jenny and Gareth um, really lovely people they can't do enough for you the um, place is so well run and so well looked after if you're looking for somewhere to fish or for a holiday in Somerset it's a brilliant place to go um, just take note that they shut the 30th of October until the 1st of March so they are closed over winter but um, yeah, you still got time if you want to pay a visit or if you're looking for, you know, looking to come down to Somerset and uh, looking for a, a place to camp and fish, like you won't go wrong here. Brilliant place. They've got an uh, on-site shop and that. So everything. So how do we get on? We had... Cart bags of fifty-two pounds, twenty-five pound eight, forty-four pound, thirty-four pound two, and silver's bags of nine pounds six ounce, twenty-seven pound five ounce for a combined weight of over one hundred and ninety-one pounds. So, really good day. It's been really enjoyable, non-stop. We've done a few different tactics and that, and everything's worked. So, hopefully, it will show a few people. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, and f thanks for watching and hopefully I'm going to do more if this if people like the videos I'm going to hopefully do a few more maybe go in a bit more you know detail with a few things so if you'd like to subscribe that'd be brilliant so and I'll see you soon thank you